Hello, Holy Wire Mod here. Welcome to tutorial 17 in the GLUA Pro series, where we're going to be taking a look at vectors, angles, entities, and the ENCE library. So I want to start by noting that we have Sublime Text Editor instead of Notepad++. If there has been users that have been having issues with installing the GMod Lua Lexer on the Notepad++, so figure we're going to go to Sublime instead. And also I'll have a video in the near future on how to set all this up, but for now it shouldn't change your ability to learn Lua. So let's start and jump right into the content. So if you recall from Object Oriented Programming tutorial two tutorials ago, we have the Entity Base class which has a bunch of functions associated with it. And from this base class, we have the weapon class, vehicle class, player class, and NPC class. These are all classes which are based on the entity base class. So that means that all the functions which are assigned to entity can also be used on the weapon, vehicle, player, and NPC as well. However, you can't use an NPC class on a vehicle or an NPC function on a vehicle because they're not the same or do not derive from one another. So let's start then by going over a couple examples for the vector. So we'll start with the vector and say the vector is going to equal to this vector x, y, and z. As such, I'll put this as lowercase so it's not confusing. And this x, y, and z values, they're all from negative infinity to positive infinity. They are floating point as well. And so for example, we can have 42.8 or 6, and then we can have negative 340. And we can have some z value of 30. So your x and y positions are generally going to be forward, back, left, and right on a map. And your position for z is going to be how high you are, how low you are on the map. So then we also have an angle. So our angle here can be some pitch, yaw, and some roll value. So your pitch is going to be your aim position from your ability to pretty much look up and down from negative 90 to 90 degrees. And then you have your yaw position, which is going to be your ability to look left and right. So you have from 0 to 360 degrees. And then your roll is going to be the angle of your model, so you don't really have to worry about roll so much. All right, so now that you know that, let's say we want to get some values from this vector. Well, you treat the vector as if it were a table and as if x, y, and z were key values. So you can have x right here. So we go here. There we go. We have the x value such. Of course, we'll get the y value. And there we go, we have a y value and z value such as well. Same thing with the angle, just treat it as if it were a table and your key values then are pitch, yaw, and roll, just like that. Okay, so that's how you access those. So now let's take an example where we're going to have a function and this is going to be called when we spawn. So we're going to have player spawn and here's the player which is going to be spawning. And every time a player spawns, let's say that we want to create a zombie. So to do this, we can have entity right here. So it could be any old entity. And that's just going to represent the class of entity that we're going to be creating, which in this case is going to be class zombie. So NPC underscore zombie. Now for NPCs in general, for the class names, you'll have NPC underscore and then the name of the NPC. Same thing with weapon, you'd have weapon underscore and then the name of the weapon. So we can have shotgun, which we can get into a little later. And with vehicle, of course, you can do that as well. So int underscore zombie is going to be what we're spawning. And then we're going to have entity. Now entity has the vector position and the angular direction. So let's start with the position. So our position is going to be some vector. It's going to have 0, 0, 0. And what's nice about vectors is you can actually add them together and get a total vector. So we have vec a plus this vector right here. Vec a, vec a in this case, we can set to the position of the player. Because remember, entity, you have set position, which means you also have a get position as it's related to vectors. And because entity is the base class for player, that means you can also use get position for player as well, as we discussed a little earlier. So this is going to return a vector, and we're going to add it to a second vector, which will be an offset vector. And let's say the zombie is going to spawn 80 units about to the right on the y position of the player. Okay, And then let's have set angles. So here we're going to have angle, we're going to have 0, 0, 0, it doesn't really matter so much for this example, just showing you can actually do it. And then we have the set health, which is going to be 100 for our zombie. And lastly, we actually have to spawn the zombie, because the crate doesn't actually spawn it for us automatically. And also recall, all these must be set before you spawn the zombie. 
though you can actually set the health after the zombie. So let's then say if the entity is valid, it's very good practice to check if your entity is actually still valid before doing any other conditional checks on it. And let's say the entity, is it an NPC? Well, if it's an NPC, we're going to be printing an NPC has been spawned. And then we're also going to put in parentheses here the entity's class. So we're going to say get class to actually get the class name of the NPC, which in this case is int zombie. Or I'm sorry, actually it's going to be NPC zombie. Very good catch right there, else we would have had a nice little error. Now, likewise, you can also remove the entity by using safe remove entity. And then we can have entity right here, and that will get rid of the entity in a fashion which is, of course, safe. However, just to show you that it works originally, I'm going to keep that right there. So what about actually getting all the entities or finding certain entities on the map? Well, something you can do is called print table. There's a specific table which contains every single entity. So in the ints library, we say ints and then get all. And there we go. We have a list of every single entity which is on GM construct at the moment. So we have hints, we have info player start, which are our spawn points. Uh, some more hints is sky camera, which is going to be for the sky box and sun, which is going to tell our sun where to actually point and how bright it is and whatnot. The soundscape and all these are pretty much hammer entities or valve hammer editor entities for the most part. So I won't be getting too much into that. And instead of actually going through that entire list to find a specific entity, I'm going to show you a little bit more efficient ways of doing that. So we're going to have player nil. Let's say we're trying to find all the players. I know we have player right here. However, and this player, of course, references this player. However, for sake of finding entity, we're going to put PL and we're going to find the player again. So in pairs, and we're going to say ints find by class. And the class we're looking for in this case is the player class. So you can put vehicle, you can put weapons there, that works too. And then we're going to say that the player is going to equal to int. And once we actually find the player, we're going to break from there. So we only have one player on the map in this case. Now, for example, what if you had actually 100 players on the map? Well, then this would be a very inefficient way of finding the player. Though you could do it like this. Another way you can actually search for a player is to find them within a sphere. So we're going to have int in pairs and just like this, and we're going to have int find int sphere. So this is going to return every single entity which is in a sphere somewhere on the map. So the origin of the sphere is going to be, so we'll have entity and we'll have get position. So this is going to be the zombie's position after it's spawned. And then we're going to check 100 units around that zombie in a sphere. And then it's going to return a table of all the different entities inside that sphere. So It'll be every type of entity, so we need a way to filter out players. So we'll say is player. Of course, good practice, you would put is valid as well. However, for the sake of this tutorial, we don't have to do that. And then we'll say player is equal to int, and we'll break, so we're not going through the rest of the table. So in this case, or this specific example, this variant is going to be more efficient than this variant. However, there are times where this variant may be more efficient to this variant, depending on how many entities are around the place of origin in which you're searching. And lastly, we're going to simply print the name of the player or the entity info for the player. Okay, so that's a good handful of information right there. But just to show you a little bit more of what you can do, we're also going to say entity. And we'll say we want to get the position. Let's say we want to get the distance from the zombie to the player. And to do that, we simply just compare their two vector positions as such with the distance uh, function which is found if you go into here and go into vector you can find all these different functions as well same thing with angle there's a ton of different functions that you can use with angle too so that's pretty much how classes are working should give you a very good general idea of that so let's take a couple more examples before we start up the server and get into it and start playing so you can also get the angles of an entity remember they have a direction associated with them and you can also do something which is nice for swaps is called get forward which will actually get the forward um, direction it's like what direction it's actually aiming towards 80 units that's useful for melee swaps we'll get into that when the time comes but for now Let's just stick with the basics here and get some basic information about that. All right, so we have everything set up and I'm going to go into the server. Okay, so we're 
Ooh, that is a mad zombie. We are in the server, and here is our zombie. It is 80 units away. It says an NPC has been spawned. Actually, let me go away so I don't die. Okay, so NPC has been spawned. It says the player, so we successfully found me. 80 units away from the zombie upon its spawning. Here's the angle, and here is the get forward position. So when it spawned, it was looking 80 units in the X direction, or is looking in the X direction. So that's a good way to tell which way something is facing. Okay, so now let's show you what it's like with Safe Remove Entity. So I'll do this. I'll get rid of Safe Remove Entity, and I'll save this and kill myself. And I'm going to have to restart the server, so just give me one second. Okay, so we're back into the server, and this time when I spawn, notice the zombie isn't actually spawning there. So for those who are curious what happened, for whatever reason, all these loops and whatnot are causing the crash, so we're just going to get rid of that. And I'll also spawn another zombie for us really quick to show you that the server no longer crashes, and we are good to go. All right, so here's our zombie pal. And let's say that I want to actually give myself a weapon so I can defend myself against the oncoming zombie apocalypse. Well, that's pretty easy. So on player spawn, we'll just say player will give a weapon. Remember, this is how you indicate the class name for the weapon. So weapon underscore shotgun. And let's give some ammo as well as six rounds. It's probably not going to be enough to ward off all the zombies. So I believe it's called buckshot for the ammo. And there we go. And there we are. We have a shotgun, and now we are zombie killing machine. Perfect. All right, so that's going to conclude everything for the tutorial. In the next tutorial, we'll be getting into how to make actual custom entity as well as going over some hooks for entity. I know you guys are excited for that. But if you have any questions, feel free to leave some in the comments section below. If you like the content, feel free to like, subscribe, and share, and bell as well. And I'll catch you guys in the next tutorial. Thank you for watching. Have a better day than the zombie. Also, don't forget soup is good. Don't forget to check out Hexane Networks for affordable and high-performance server hosting. That's Hexane Networks, whose link is in the description below.